In this video, we review the principle of corresponding states. In our prior work with uh, equations of state, we have seen that uh, whenever you have deviations from ideality, uh, you have that different gases uh, interact differently so that things like compression factors and critical points are different for a variety of gases. A way to actually see that is to draw here a compression factor versus pressure diagram for a couple of gases showing that at the same conditions the compression factors are different. Okay, so again, if we, if we draw here a compression factor as a function of pressure for two different gases, okay, this might be, uh, this is one which will be the ideal gas limit, okay, and then um, this gas experiences first attractions and then if the pressure goes really high it goes on to um, uh, experience repulsions and this happens at a temperature, whatever this is, T1. Okay, that may be the behavior for that particular gas, but at the same temperature, uh, a different gas that doesn't have strong attractions between the gas particles will have a different compression factor versus pressure graph, which may be something like this, at the same temperature. Okay, so these are two different gases at the same temperature showing two different compression factors. And again, that's just a reflection from the fact that uh, different molecules interact differently. For example, a nitrogen molecule interacting with a nitrogen molecule is quite different from a hydrogen molecule interacting with a hydrogen molecule. Now, uh, there's another uh, way that you can see that gas particles interact differently in different gases, and that is that different gases have different uh, uh, critical points. They have different uh, ways to condense. Okay, so for example, if we draw here a graph plotting uh, two um, <coughs> condensation isotherms for two different gases, right? So what we'll have is something like this. This is going to be an isotherm, so pressure versus molar volume, and uh, here we'll have the regular ideal gas type behavior for two temperatures, so T1, T2, and then, uh, you know, for a particular gas, you might have a condensation region that might look like this, right? But for a different gas, you might have a condensation region that might look a little different. All right, that will be the critical point of the first gas. This is the critical point of the second gas, and those critical points are different, okay? So again, these are two kind of different uh, manifestations of the same concept, that gas particles interact different in various gases. Now, uh, so then van der Waals thought that uh, uh, maybe a way to actually reconcile these different behaviors for different gases were, uh, uh, was to kind of relate uh, the conditions under, uh, un under which a gas is to the critical point, okay? So that we can establish something that is called a corresponding state. So let's see how that works with these graphs. Suppose that we're interested in knowing what the compression factor is for this gas at some conditions, and those conditions might be this, right? So that would be a condition of pressure and then some temperature, and you will have an isotherm right here. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, there will be some compression factor to that gas, I notice that that point is just uh, offset by just a little bit from the critical point. Now we can ask the same question of the other gas, right? We can say, well, what will be the compression factor in this other gas at these conditions? Well, you're clearly going to see that the compression factor will be very different because this point is really far away from the critical point in this particular gas. Something that would be more fair would be to define a corresponding state to this one for that gas such that the deviation from the critical point is the same as this one, right? So the corresponding state for this second gas would be that one, okay? Because the separation uh, of uh, the physical state to the critical point and the physical state to the critical point in these two scenarios is the same, okay? So that's kind of the principle of corresponding states. That state corresponds to this one and in principle, you might expect that uh, perhaps the compression factor and other properties of that gas might be the same in these corresponding states. Okay, so to define the corresponding states, uh, we actually relate the properties of uh, the physical state to the values at the critical point. Okay, so we can define here, say, um, a reduced, pre a reduced pressure, okay, in which th that is simply going to be the pressure divided or relative to the critical pressure. And then we can define here a critical a reduced temperature, which is the temperature divided over the temperature of the critical point. And then there will also be a molar volume, which we call reduced, 
uh, in which you have the molar volume of the gas at some conditions relative to the critical molar volume. Right, so the idea is that uh, uh, the properties of gases in the same reduced variables might be the same because they will be in corresponding states. Okay, so uh, to prove that that actually makes some sense, and experimentally we find that that, is, uh, that that is the case, that yes, there are these corresponding states for a variety of gases, what we're going to do is take the Van der Waals equation of state and see uh, how we can actually introduce these reduced variables and see what is it that we can learn from that Van der Waals equation of state in terms of those reduced variables, which kind of remove the sensitivity of properties to the nature of the gas. Okay, so if we start with the Van der Waals equation of state in molar form, uh, we have the following. So that would be RT over the molar volume minus B minus uh, the constant A over the molar volume squared. Okay, and again, the idea now is to actually change this equation uh, or manipulate it so that we can incorporate reduced values instead of the actual values of the uh, physical state. Okay, so what we're going to do is take each one of these expressions and simply, simply solve for the, physical, uh, uh, pro uh, for the physical state variables. Okay, and notice that then the pressure is gonna be just the product of the reduced pressure times the pressure at the critical point. Okay, so we can change that to simply PR times PC, reduced pressure times the pressure at the critical point, and we can do the same thing for the rest of uh, the uh, variables. Okay, and the molar volume, same thing. It's the product of the reduce multiplied by the critical, and the same thing is gonna happen here. Reduce multiplied by critical. Now, uh, to move forward with this, uh, we now recall uh, how those uh, critical values depend on the A and B constants uh, for a Van der Waals equation of state. Okay, so remember that we have seen in other videos that the uh, molar volume at the critical point is 3B. And then for the pressure, the critical pressure uh, is equal to uh, A over 27B squared. And then for the temperature, the critical temperature is equal to uh, 8A over 27RB. So now that we have these values for the critical constants for each Van der Waals gas, then we can actually replace uh, these values into that expression and see uh, what comes out in terms of the reduced properties. Okay, so uh, here we're gonna have PR multiplied by the critical pressure, so that it would be 8, A over 27B squared, and then we have here R multiplied by the redu reduced temperature multiplied by the critical temperature, so that is 8A over 27RB, and then divided over uh, the reduced molar volume multiplied by the critical molar volume, 3B minus B, and then uh, we have here A over the reduced molar volume squared multiplied by the critical volume molar volume, which is 3b squared, so that is 9b squared. Okay? Right. So let's see if we can uh, cancel here some terms. Notice that that a cancels on both sides of the expression. We have here a 27, 27, and a 9. We can multiply this by 3 uh, in the numerator and denominator to get a 27 right there. So that would be 27, 27, 27. So that cancels out. Uh, the next thing that we can actually do is cancel this R with that R, and then notice that we have here a B, which we can uh, cam down here and just make it B squared. Okay, so uh, then that B squared also cancels, and uh, the result of all this is a very uh, very simple expression, uh, which is going to be very telling. Right? So that will be eight times the uh, reduced temperature divided over uh, three reduced molar volume minus 1 minus 3 over the reduced molar volume uh, squared. Okay, this is the Van der Waals equation of state in terms of reduced variables and then there's something that is absolutely fascinating about this expression and that is that it does not depend on the A and B constants which are specific to each gas. Right, so notice how in terms of reduced variables, there's actually no dependence 
uh, on the nature of the gas. The equation is exactly the same uh, for all gases. And what that means is that, well, in terms of reduced variables, then the properties of the gas should be the same uh, regardless of what the gas is. Okay, so, so a, a, a final way to actually kind of see that is to then turn this graph where we have compression factor versus the actual pressure, but instead to, uh, uh, represent this in terms of reduced uh, variables, right? So now we remember this as a function of the reduced pressure, which we have defined uh, here. And then it turns out that uh, now the, two, the, uh, the lines are going to be identical for a variety of gases. Okay, so uh, we're gonna redraw the scale a little bit here, and it turns out that now two different gases actually tend to have the same curve at a particular uh, reduced temperature. So we can make this uh, reduced temperature one, and, and it turns out that again, now two different gases like hydrogen and nitrogen, they both would fall into this same line because again, we're now using uh, corresponding states which are defined by these reduced variables. And again, once you do that, you remove the sensitivity of the properties of the gas, like the compression factor, to uh, the nature of the gas, right? That is entirely lifted. Of course, these lines change with uh, temperature. You have a different temperature, this might turn out like that, and that will be for a different reduced temperature. But again, two different gases or three different gases would fall on the same line. Okay, so let me wrap up this video. In this video, we have seen the principle of corresponding states. Uh, it turns out that uh, if you define uh, a physical state in terms of reduced variables that simply relate the physical variables to the values at the critical point for each specific gas, it turns out that in those reduced variables, in those corresponding states, the properties of the gases are the same generally. It doesn't happen for all gases, but it happens for many gases. We've been able to prove that principle of corresponding states by deriving a Van der Waals equation of state in terms of reduced variables and demonstrating that in terms of reduced variables, there's actually no sensitivity uh, to the equation of state or of the equation of states to uh, the A and B constants that are specific to each gas. That means that each gas should have similar behavior if, they, if it has the same reduced physical state.